What's good? Brian Tong here and Apple is testing out home robots? Yeah, plus will there be an iPad Pro event and the latest iPhone 16 and 16 Pro Buzz and more. But hey, let's start off with all the talk about Apple robots and looking for their next big thing. A recent report from Bloomberg's Mark Gurman says Apple is exploring the idea of making personal robotic devices with artificial intelligence. And if you're thinking what I'm thinking, like, are we actually doing this, Apple? Now, the report goes on to say Apple has a small team within its hardware engineering and AI groups looking at robotics, and it's more than just one type of robot. German says one of the projects would be a home robot that follows a person around the home. It wouldn't be the same, but maybe Amazon's Astro robot for mobile security that roams around is a little bit of inspiration, but Apple's robot would be your sidekick or maybe even help people with things they might not be able to do. And Apple could even possibly take it further by making a humanoid type robot that can handle household chores. Uh, didn't they make a movie about this already? They did. And uh, how did that go? You are experiencing a car accident. So at the moment, iRobots, they do exist um, in the form of vacuum robots. And some of you have something like that in your home today. I'm just saying y'all better be careful. But this idea of a humanoid Apple robot could be around a decade away, and Apple reportedly hasn't decided to go in that direction just yet. Now, in something a little more realistic, Apple's also been working on a tabletop product that uses a robotic arm to move around a display. Now, the arm could help mimic a human on the other side of a FaceTime call and do things like shift the screen to record a nod or a shake of the head, right? Mimicking human actions. I mean, sure. I don't like holding my iPad all the time, but do I need a robotic arm that will likely cost, let's say at least $1,000 to hold it for me? I don't, at least not yet. Now, German's report says the device doesn't have unified support from Apple's executive team either. And we know that Apple's a hardware company first and they need new hardware to drive more sales and revenue. And yes, their services are a big part of the puzzle, but last year, four fifths of their holiday revenue came from products and some of those product categories you know, they don't have the same momentum that they once did now that they're later in their life cycle. Now, Apple clearly focused so many resources on getting the Apple Vision Pro out. So now it's time to refine it and at least get it to a more affordable price point in the next couple of years. But beyond that, the car project is no more. And I know Apple's gonna feel the repercussions of that over time financially, because this is something that Apple spent over 10 years trying to figure out and not just exploring, but actually pouring over $1 billion of dollars of resources into it. But the place that is low hanging fruit right now, and they've to me really neglected is easily the smart home. I mean, that's where Apple and their ecosystem could have really made a difference if they had gone all in a lot earlier. So will we get a new revamped Apple TV box with this rumored built-in camera for FaceTime and gestures? Or will the HomePod do more with their new AI platform this year? Or will we see an iPad that can dock to a speaker base and then be used as a hub around the house for the smart home. A genius idea that Google pulled off and really, Apple should just straight up copy. And I get that they have and should explore every product angle possible, but are Apple robots the answer to you? Because they aren't for me right now. I mean, I wanna hear your thoughts in the comments. That's what they're there for, put them in there. And I'm not saying no to the idea that things will be different 10 years from now. Maybe I will want a robot friend because I absolutely love Sony's Ibo. <laughs> Ow! Ow! <laughs> he bit my lip. Um, maybe too much, but an Apple robot, it does not get me excited, but hey, a RoboSend Optimus Prime that can talk to and dances, that gets me more excited than an Apple robot right now. All right, let's take a moment to thank the sponsor of this video, Anchor. Anchor is known for their quality power banks and wireless chargers, and I've been using them for years. So check out one of their newest products, the Anchor Prime 27,650 milliampere hour power bank with 250 watt output. This is a power bank that's portable, but it packs a big punch. It has two high powered USB-C ports and one USB-A port delivering up to 250 watts of power that can charge an M2 Pro 16 inch MacBook Pro to 50% in just 28 minutes. The power bank has a 170 watt rapid recharge via dual USB-C ports that can be fully recharged in just 37 minutes. That's fast. It's about the size of a soda can and can fit into most travel bags. So this travel buddy ensures that I have reliable power on the go. 
It can charge a 13-inch MacBook Air 1.28 times or an iPhone 14 approximately 4.67 times before running out. It's also meeting TSA requirements, and that means it can be taken on planes as a carry-on. So take it on the go when you travel, use it in a cafe or at the office, use it anywhere. The smart digital display gives you real-time information on remaining battery life, power input and output, so you know exactly what's happening. And the Anchor app lets you quickly locate your power bank and look at real-time stats from your phone. They also have a smaller 20,000 milliampere hour prime power bank that's more portable and affordable with a 200 watt total output that has the same feature set and it's better for short trips. This package also comes with the Anchor 100 watt charging base for the Anchor Prime power bank. This allows you to place your power bank on top of the charging base to charge it up, but this can charge more than a power bank when it's plugged in and has two USB-C ports and one USB-A port delivering a total output of 100 watts to all devices. So it can really charge four devices at once if that's you. It's super compact because it's using GAN technology and it also has a smart LED indicator. Now you can charge everything everywhere faster all at once. So check out the links in the description of this video to find out more about the Anchor Prime Power Bank and the Anchor Charging Base. Okay, let's get back to the stories and an update for you with the iPad Pros. Digitimes reports Apple is unlikely to have an event to announce the new iPad Pro and iPad Air models, so we're just gonna have to wait and see, but just don't hold your breath for April anymore. That's pretty much a donezo. Mark Gurman's latest expected launch time for the new iPads is now targeting to be no later than the second week of May. Apple is still reportedly finishing up the iPad OS software development and then manufacturing techniques for the new OLED displays have been the two biggest factors for postponing its launch. Now we've already talked about what to expect in my last video, but here's a fast quick hit just based on the rumors. The iPad Pros, the new ones, will get a new M3 chip, OLED displays, thinner body, thinner display bezels, and a potential matte screen option. You got a landscape positioned camera and potential MagSafe wireless charging on the back. Two new iPad Air models with the M2 chip, landscape camera, and then the first ever 12.9 inch iPad Air. That's gonna be a nice one. Also a new Magic Keyboard with an aluminum body will be an option, larger trackpad and other design tweaks. And then a new Apple Pencil, which might have a new squeeze gesture for more functionality and a different body. So we're still waiting for all of this, most likely until mid-May. Okay, let's catch you up on a few iPhone 16 and 16 Pro reports and just some of the latest chatter. The iPhone 16 Pro's rumored A18 chip will have a larger die size to boost its AI capabilities and performance. That will still be equipped with a six core GPU, which is the same as the A17 Pro chip in the iPhone 15 Pro. And remember, during my Apple Park interviews, Anand Shimpy specifically called out that the current A17 Pro is more than capable of handling generative AI tasks right now, which leads me to believe that for people concerned about the iPhone 16 Pro being able to handle more advanced AI tasks exclusively, I think it's possible that it might be able to maybe do them a little faster and on device, maybe the 15 Pro is also, but the 15 Pro lineup would still be able to handle plenty of the workload with these new updates. And Apple isn't looking to leave previous iPhones completely in the dust just based on how we talked about it. But, you know, of course, we're gonna have to wait and see what they reveal at WWDC on June the 10th at their keynote, which is just a couple months away. And then if there was another takeaway from my interviews, it was that Apple could not stop talking about the camera. It was at the top of everyone's mind who I spoke to. So you've got to believe that the reports of Apple, including an all new capture button on the new iPhones, just leans into that idea that Apple also believes that our phones are our cameras and our camera is our phone. And Apple's gonna lean even more in the, into this than they ever have, right? We've got an image shared by Sonny Dixon that shows how a third party case maker is already including a massive cutout below the power button for the iPhone 16 Pro, anticipating that this rumored capture button will be an important part of the new 16 Pro. The Mac rumors earlier reported that Apple plans to add a capture button to the entire iPhone 16 model lineup and it will give quick access controls for capturing photos and movies. It'll also have multiple functions like zooming in and out by swiping left or right on the button, which that sounds really slick. Or you could do like a half press to get things in focus or just a hard forceful press for capturing photos and recording content. Now it's also believed to be a touch sensitive button, which might be a strong reason that this is a cutout and not a covered button area. And if you wanted something new and shiny, well, hey, you might be in luck with the 16 Pro because according to a report from Korea, 
the upcoming 16 Pros will have a new process for finishing and coloring titanium. Now that will reportedly make the new iPhone 16 Pro and 16 Pro Max look more shiny and polished compared to the 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max that have a more raw brushed finish. Now this new process will result in a glossier appearance that is more similar to the stainless steel material used in previous Pro iPhones. And then Apple, you know they could also spend at least three to five minutes telling us how they did it with sexy B-roll that gets us all excited. I mean, come on. You know you've been seduced by the ways of the Apple keynote before. And you know, don't worry. Like, it happens to everyone at least once during a very vulnerable time in your life when, you know, you just need something or just someone to show you love back and show you that they care as much as you cared and you cared so much because, you know, you've been going through some things, some really tough, like, times and Sometimes an Apple Keynote is there. It's just it's just right there when you need it at the perfect time to pick you up. At least that's what I've been told. Now, the new titanium finish will also reportedly be less prone to scratches compared to stainless steel. And I don't know about you, I like that raw titanium finish a lot, even if it's completely hidden by a case 95% of the time that I use it. And in case you were wondering, Reported iPhone 16 cases have been posted online featuring the updated vertical rear camera alignment, which also gives us a little bit of confirmation that the standard iPhone 16 lineup will be capable of recording spatial video like we have heard from rumor reports and all of this just lines up. So previous standard iPhone models have had a diagonal arrangement as far back as the 13, but it's back to the vertical alignment for the 16. So put it all together and you know, we know so much and pretty much everything we expect is most likely happening. But again, WWDC is gonna reveal a lot, a lot of the software. That's what I'm just really looking like, what's gonna happen with the iPhone and AI and also uh, Vision OS 2, what's gonna happen there. All right, that's gonna do it for this video. If you like what you see, give me that thumbs up, subs up, and hit that notification bell, ding, to get all my latest videos when they drop. And if you want more of that Apple goodness, you can check out my weekly Apple Bits XL audio podcast with the latest stories and special guests. Hey, everybody, thanks so much for watching. Take care, and I'll see you on the next video. Peace and love.